Vietnam is the fourth largest economy in Southeast Asia and one of the fastest growing economies globally. As its foreign investments and exports steadily grow, some claim that it will soon replace China as the world's factory. In addition, the country plays an important role in Southeast Asia amid the current geopolitical tension. But like China, Vietnam is a communist state. How is Vietnam different from China? And is that difference real or perceived? Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. Li Ka Xing, the richest man in Hong Kong, is an astute investor. While the Chinese real estate market was red hot in 2010, he started to divest from China and turned his focus on the West, investing heavily in the United Kingdom. After the Ukraine war broke out, Li and his sons have been selling their European assets and turning their focus on Vietnam. In early April, Li's company and Japan's Oryx Group met with the mayor of Ho Chi Minh City, formerly Saigon, to discuss investment in Vietnam's largest city. Since the U.S.-China trade war broke out, Vietnam has played an increasingly critical role in Southeast Asia, while balancing the challenging triangular relations between China, the United States, and Japan. Last year, as soon as U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris left Vietnam in August, after a visit to secure economic and security ties. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Japan's Defense Minister went to visit. On the same day that Wang met with the Vietnamese Communist Party General Secretary, Vietnamese Defense Minister reached an agreement with Japanese Defense Minister. The two signed an agreement on defense export from Japan to Vietnam. The Japanese minister even mentioned Taiwan in his speech. Although China and Vietnam pledged to enhance their comprehensive strategic partnership, the two communist neighbors have been clashing over a maritime sovereignty dispute in the South China Sea, and the conflict is worsening. Many observers say that Vietnam is more geopolitically aligned with the United States and Japan than with China. This perceived alliance with the democratic world has benefited Vietnam economically. In 2021, 106 countries and regions invested $31 billion in Vietnam. Singapore ranked number one, accounting for 34% of the total investment, followed by South Korea at 16% and Japan at 13%. About 57% of the foreign investment was in manufacturing, and 26% in real estate, followed by retail and technology. Vietnam's total exports grew from 72 billion in 2010 to 264 billion in 2019, an increase of 265%. In contrast, China's exports grew 58% within the same period. In the ranking of global electronics exporters, Vietnam improved from 47th place in 2001 to 12th place in 2015 and held that place until the pandemic hit. More multinational companies have moved production lines from China to Vietnam due to the increasing cost of doing business in China, regional geopolitical tensions, and China's harsh zero-COVID policy. While China's major cities experienced lockdowns in the past few months, Vietnam's exports rose 48% in March from February. 51% of Nike shoes are made in Vietnam, with the proportion made in China falling to 21%, compared to 35% in 2006. Nike's rival, Adidas, has followed in the same direction, with 40% of its footwear made in Vietnam now. In addition to textiles and garments, Many electronics and home appliance manufacturers have built factories and moved supply chains to Vietnam. The electronics industry is one of the fastest growing industries. Samsung is the largest single foreign investor in Vietnam, with a total investment amounting to over $19 billion. Samsung now contributes about 20% to Vietnam's GDP. In September 2019, Samsung closed its last cell phone factory in China, a three decades old manufacturing facility in Huizhou, Guangdong, and moved manufacturing to India and Vietnam. In 2021, Vietnam produced 50% of Samsung cell phones that were exported to 128 countries and regions. 
Like China, Vietnam is a communist state, but Vietnam appeals to foreign investors because of its low labor costs, low tariffs, fewer restrictions on foreign investments, and fewer counterfeiting problems. Western media and experts generally believe that the Vietnamese Communist regime has a higher tolerance for different opinions than the Chinese Communist Party and is more open to a democratic process. Several incidents have contributed to this view. In 2002, the Vietnamese National Assembly rejected then Prime Minister Pan Wen Kai's nominee for Minister of National Security on the grounds of corruption. And in 2010, the National Assembly rejected the government's high-speed rail project linking the capital city Hanoi with Ho Chi Minh City in the south. And another fact that has made the outside world believe Vietnamese society is more open is that, unlike the CCP, the VCP or Vietnamese Communist Party does not ban Google, Facebook, YouTube or Twitter in the country. Also, the VCP has allowed an electoral system that's perceived as being the most open in the communist world. The VCP allows multiple candidates to compete for one seat in the legislative body. Some non-party members are also allowed to compete in the elections. This perception of Vietnam's being open has been driving the growth of foreign investments and strong exports. However, if you talk to Vietnamese, they are less optimistic about their democratic prospects. They say that the candidates in the Vietnamese elections are selected by the VCP, and the winners are sometimes predetermined. The election is just a formality for show, for publicity. Sure, non-party members and ordinary citizens can participate in elections, but if they are elected, they don't have the power to institute changes or issue policies. The real power is controlled by the almighty Communist Party, just like the CCP. My Vietnamese friends told me that the VCP allows Google, Facebook and the like to be accessible in Vietnam, not because it is more open or democratic than the CCP, but because it doesn't have the resources and technology that the CCP does to block these sites. But it controls the internet by blocking websites containing sensitive information, such as Voice of America and Radio Free Asia, and sentencing citizens who dare to speak up. Le Van Hai was taken into custody in September 2020 because he complained to local authorities and asked for compensation for his family's properties confiscated by the government to make way for the construction of a wastewater plant. Frustrated by officials' refusal of his request, Le shared his experience on Facebook, leading to his arrest. Six months later, a Vietnamese court sentenced him to four years in prison for abusing freedom and democratic rights to infringe upon the interest of the state. Like the CCP, the VCP also employs a group of red keyboard warriors who join online discussions and forums to fight those who are critical of the government. Because of the keyboard warriors' combative behavior, the Vietnamese call them the Red Bull after the energy drink. Many people say that today's Vietnam is like China 30 years ago. My question is, 10 years from now, after the VCP becomes more powerful and wealthy, would it turn tyrannical just like the CCP? Would it block the internet because it would have the means then? Historically, the VCP has learned from the CCP, which goes as far back as Mao Zedong's time. But the two communist parties also have a deep-set distrust of each other that erupted into the Sino-Vietnam War in 1979 and continues today with the territorial dispute in the South China Sea. Vietnamese people do not like the CCP, but will they prevent the VCP from turning their country into another China? I'll do a follow-up video to explore the relations between China and Vietnam so we can better understand where Vietnam is heading. Here is the video I made on Li Kaixin and his investment and divestment in the UK, and a video about China's water resources in which I mentioned the Mekong River. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.